Hello, this is Glenn Yancey with InSource Solutions. In today's presentation, we're going to go over enterprise licensing from Aviva. And we're going to approach this from a very high level perspective. So we're going to discuss some of the benefits of reservations and how they differ with the concurrent floating licenses that exist. We can also use the Enterprise Licensing Manager to see which user or device has checked out a license. We'll discuss how to add reservations, either user-based or device-based, and we'll discuss a new feature in 2020R2 called the Permanent Checkout, which is for uh, more mission-critical servers and clients. So let's get started. The Enterprise Licensing from Aviva is made up of two components. You have the licensing server and you have the licensing manager. Both of these are prompted during the install of any Aviva software, whether or not you want to put the license server on a machine or the license manager. Keep in mind the license server, you may only have very few, but a license manager is nothing more than a client interface versus the license server, which is a designated server. So on the license manager, when that's opened up in a HTML5 browser, you can utilize the URL to point to that server name with the forward slash AE license manager, and that will take you to the license server to configure that server. So how does this work from a uh, the perspective of licensing? How do I add a license? What is my interface? Well, starting in 2017, we no longer use the LIC files or the .LIC files. Uh, also known as the orchestra.lic or wwsuite.lic. They have become obsolete. So starting in 2017, the newer XML licensing was released, and this was to, uh, to better enforce the licensing on a machine so that a single license cannot be used more than once. Now with this XML file that we have, when it gets added to a licensed server, it has to be activated. And we can choose to do this in an online or offline fashion. We have to use what's called the configurator on the client perspective, just like we have with these two supervisory clients. We need to use the configurator to point to that licensed server so they know to whom should I ask for a, uh, a license for InTouch or let's just say a historian. So once we are in the configurator on both clients, they need to point to that licensed server, which in this case is called Galaxy SVR. The XML file is received by the client, installed on the license server, and then once installed and activated, my clients will then be able to have a, a license or licenses allocated to them. So let's discuss the two models from a high level perspective of how we activate a license. We have what is called online, and we also have what's called offline. So with online, it's pretty straightforward. We have a license server, where we place an XML file onto that license server. And once we do so, we then activate that license where it connects back to, to the internet, to Aviva's website. So all of this is as if we were on a network that is connected to the outside world. Once I have that activation ID returned back to the license server, then my clients can receive their licenses. That part's pretty straightforward. Offline is where it's a little bit more complex, but it's also designed to help safeguard against any, any threats. So in this case, we have an isolated network with an air gap between that network and a computer that is connected to the internet. So on the license server that is not connected to the internet, I add the XML file. Once it is added, then it prompts me to put or to save a sync file onto something like a USB stick. So I take that sync file to a machine that is connected to the internet. Once connected, then I access the uh, Viva license activation page by selecting Wonderware, and you'll see the URL at the top, which is licenseactivation.wonderware.com. Once you are here, you add that sync file into this interface. It returns back a sync file with an activation ID. So that sync file goes back onto the USB stick with the newly uh, added activation ID. 
I take that to my offline license server, and now my license server is activated, and my clients can receive their licenses. So now let's discuss the license manager. This is the interface, not the server, but the interface to the license server. We'll discuss uh, a couple of the the tabs in, it, in, the, in the interface, as well as uh, how we can determine usage. So in the license manager, again, it's a, an HTML5 browser. And on that browser, we would add a license server based on our computer name. We'd hit the license, add license server, select that XML file, and activate it onto this server. The usage summary that we have here is designed to show us feature lines. So what's a feature line? A feature line is a, uh, a component in the license that says you can enable this product with this license. So it might be uh, the, your historian. It might be not just your historian, but also a tag count, whether or not I'm using 25,000 tags, 50,000 tags, whatever that may be. There are feature lines in here that are designated for that. So here I can see all the feature lines that are part of this demo license that I had added to the system. Also, with the, with the usage summary, you can see any that have reservations and how many are currently in use. Now, some of these other feature lines that you see here are not in use, but they still show up. The next tab, which is called the usage details, is designed to show you only the feature lines that are in use. So I can get, I can drill down a little bit further to see, uh, in this case, I have an enterprise historian with 2 million tags. I see it's checked out by this computer name and out of this feature line, I have up to 200 historians that I can enable with this temporary demo license. So the usage details will tell you who is currently using the licenses. Unlike the usage summary, which shows you all feature lines, usage detail only shows you those that are in use. So now let's discuss reservations. Reservations are designed to uh, make sure that a specific user or device always has a license enabled for them before anybody else. So our InTouch and Historian clients are all concurrent license or concurrent licenses. Whether or not they're web-based, thin clients, thick clients, it doesn't matter. We look at them as concurrent licenses. The so first come, first serve scenario. So if you have five users and you have six uh, people that want to use that license then the first five will end up getting that license and the sixth person has to wait for one of the first five to relinquish that license before it can receive one. So it is a first come first serve scenario. Whereas, as I mentioned before, the reservations guarantee that a user or a device will always have that license, whereas everybody else will stay as concurrent. Now in version 3.7 of the license manager from Aviva, they now enable a new feature called permanent checkout. That's one of the key things that we have uh, for device reservations, and we'll discuss that more in detail. But also some of the feature names have changed, or some of the feature lines. In the past, you may have seen something called either uh, Viva OMI or maybe the InTouch for System Platform. That is now known as a supervisory client. So both InTouch OMI and InTouch for System Platform will be enabled by the supervisory client feature line in our licenses. The InTouch runtime that we used to have with uh, whatever amount of tags, and the in stands for number of, of tags, whether or not it's 3K, 60K, 1K, whatever that may be, that's now known as InTouch workstation tags. So your feature lines will show workstation rather than runtime. So let's look at the license manager as far as user reservations are concerned. With these user reservations, I access the, the license manager, and then under user reservations, I hit add user and type in that username and find the feature line that I'm going to associate with that user. So in this case, I've added the supervisory client. This enables InTouch for system platform and the Aviva OMI product. So I can see at this point, I have up to 300 um, instances that I can enable of the supervisory client with this demo license. In the real world, you may only have five or 10 or however many clients you have purchased. So once added, then any user that has been added to a reservation then shows up at the bottom. 
So in this case, I've added myself and I've added Arnold Schwarzenegger or A. Schwarzenegger. And both of us are users with reservations. So how does this work with our concurrent licensing? Well, as I mentioned before, it's a first come first serve for everybody else. But for myself and for Arnold Schwarzenegger, we always have a license enabled for us. It's waiting for us to use. Nobody else can use it because it is tied to, uh, to our usernames. So you can see here that we're now enabled to utilize InTouch for System Platform, but our other users, such as Clark Kent, Bruce Wayne, Harrison Ford, and Chuck Norris, they are going to be acting in a concurrent license fashion. They have to fight it out. If I only have five users and two of those are, are uh, reserved by name or by user, then one of those four will unfortunately not receive a license until the other three, one of the other threes, end up relinquishing that license. Now, device reservations are similar in the fact that you're tying a feature line to a node uh, versus a username. So it is very similar, but we're not using usernames. We're tying it to a computer name. So I hit add device. And in this case, I have a computer that is called historian T2 underscore SVR. This is my tier two historian. And I have many historians that are utilizing my license server, but I want to make sure that this specific historian is always utilizing the enterprise license uh, feature line. I don't want it to use the local historian or uh, my standard historian license uh, for historian. I want it to use the enterprise. So here I supply the name. I have a checkbox to link that feature line to that computer. And now when my historians come up, and we're assuming the XML file is already there, but my historian server that is my tier two or um, yeah, tier two enterprise historian always has that feature line waiting for them. Whereas my other historian, maybe I'll add a reservation for that at some point, but um, all my other feature lines for my historians are uh, maybe enterprise or, or standard, but I want to, to verify that my tier two always has that license. So I can go back to the usage details and see that that, that server is in use. So that's how I can verify it. Now, the new feature that exists in uh, 3.7 of the License Manager, as well as 2020 or 2, a system platform, is this checkout component. Checkout does a permanent checkout. So how does this work? Well, my license uh, server is currently utilizing this XML file, and my historian server goes um, accesses that license server and say, may I have a license that's associated to my name, which is the historian enterprise, 2 million license. It then gives me a license and says, okay, you can keep that license permanently if you want. Even if the license server goes down, this license um, for my enterprise historian is always going to be tied to that tier two historian. So this makes sure that a token is established on that tier two historian. And again, even if I lose connections to that license server, it never goes into a grace period. Even after the uh, amount of time that the historian may have for a grace period when it cannot communicate to the license server, it will always retain that license. So this treats it almost like a local license to that machine rather than utilizing a license server but the license server is still required initially to make that initial connection to pass from the license server to my historian server with the tier two enterprise um, two million tag license. So we, we typically do this for our mission critical nodes to make sure that they always are up and running and not have to worry about connecting back to a license server um, for its uh, to, to maintain uh, as little downtime as possible. I want to keep my process up and running. I don't want to worry about licensing or disconnects. So this is a great new feature to allow you to maintain and keep a license associated with your device name. But again, the permanent checkout only applies to device reservations, not to user. So in summary, the license manager is our client interface for the license server by Viva. XML files are now what we use with version 2017 or higher. Uh, 
The .lic files are considered obsolete at this point. The license manager will allow you to see via the usage details which user or device has checked out a license. Our licenses for InTouch and Historian Client are concurrent licenses. That means first come, first serve, and it doesn't matter which medium con, uh, consumes that license, whether or not it's web-based or uh, thin client or fat client. It will, uh, it will just treat it as a client, regardless of it being web-based, thin client, or thick client. The reservations that we, uh, we add into the system are applied to ensure that a user or device always has that license. And the permanent checkout says, yes, we want to make sure it always has that license, but if that license server goes down, I still want to maintain the use of that product. So it, it keeps a token. Even if the license server goes down, it keeps, keeps on chucking. So thank you again for, uh, for viewing this presentation. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us here at InSource Solutions. Thank you very much.